Hello guys, this is Augie here, and uh, I'm going to show you some uh, a new product that we have. I'm very excited about this product. It is the XGuard a backplate sensor, the RPM sensor from XGuard, and it is a very special unit because it's very advanced. And why do I say that? Is because it is the first RPM sensor that is self-calibrating and with AGC, automatic gain control. Why is that important? Well, let me show you why. All right, so normally we have plates, the back plates of engines are um, usually aluminum, but in some cases, like for instance, the YS, they have a metal plate, uh, I'm sorry, a steel plate, so that when the crankshaft pin uh, passes around it, you know, it doesn't scratch the aluminum. Um, that's their approach to that. Now, the the problem with this is that normally the regular sensors, they have a fixed trigger point. In other words, uh, the sensors generate a magnetic field inside and the magnetic field gets disturbed by the passing pin, right? And the problem with that is that, uh, like for instance, in this case, you know, with the with a metal plate, with a steel plate, um, the, the uh, changes on that magnetic field by disturbance of the spin passing by are not enough to trigger those fixed uh, trigger points on the other sensors. So the problem with that is that um, if you have an OIS engine or if you have, and if, if, you, if, the, if the sensor moves a little bit and things like that, they're kind of finicky, you know, they're, they're tricky and they, they're not that reliable. Um, and um, a lot of people reported and they kept asking me, can you make a sensor that is really reliable and this and that? And I said, well, let's take a look at it. So I figured out that the only way to do that was making a sensor that knew what to do when it's faced with different uh, uh, magnetic field disturbances, right? So to do that, we created this new sensor, which is right now installed. I'm gonna take it out later, but right now it's installed on this um, uh, engine, on a 120 engine, because it's the one that normally doesn't work with others. And uh, um, and also notice, notice these lines here. These lines uh, show where the crankshaft passes, you know, because as you can see the, um, if you align the the um, bearing against the front, then you can tell where the where the um, crankshaft beam and, and the counterweight passes. Okay, which um, tells you you know how deep the sensor is. You know inside this uh, this uh, bit here. So anyway, so the way this one works is pretty pretty awesome because it will not uh, start by sensing a fixed a fixed uh, variation of the magnetic field but it will actually weigh the, the the first three pulses and find the behavior of the current measurement and it's going to say okay so this is in my maximum this is my minimum i'm going to set my trigger point in the middle and then it continues so in other words it calibrates itself and once it does three three pulses, you know, three turns, it will know exactly how this um, particular engine is is uh, sending. Uh, in other words, uh, when, how the pin is disturbing the magnetic field that the sensor is sending in, inside the engine, uh, and that will depend on a lot of stuff. It's, it's very interesting. Um, different engines, different uh, crankcases, materials, and uh, alloys, they all change that, and that is why it was needed to have one that would actually measure the current, the, the, you know, whatever your engine is doing and adapt automatically and know exactly where your actual limits, you know, upper and lower limits are. So, and, and that gives you a whole bunch of new things that are, I'm gonna get into that later. So anyway, so uh, to show you how it works, uh, we're simply, what I have here is I have it attached to a, to a lathe. As you can see here, there's a lathe. And that allows me to 
run the the pin inside you know the it has uh, the uh, crankshaft rotating inside passing in front of the back plate all right and that's what this measure this uh, sensor is going to measure gonna, so the way we do it is we simply uh turn on power up your your uh, hold on let me let me put it on the okay so here you'll see what how it works okay so that is a regular regular uh rpm pulse so uh because this this unit has an additional feature that i will talk about it later so what you do is you start it up right you power it up okay and then you start running it and after three pulses it figures out and now it is sending you the pulses that indicate that the pin is passing right in front of the sensor so as you go faster as you can see here you increase the rpm and you have the um, the pulses are, are, are more uh, uh, more of them per, per unit of time and if, if you go slow you can actually see them you know how they pass like that so that's how that works and uh, what's cool about it is that because it is self-regulating it's self-calibrating and it has an agency any uh, changes in temperature or or changes uh, in your heading will not affect the sensor because the sensor will find the new maximum and minimums of the uh, perturbances of the magnetic fields and will be able to figure out what the trigger point should be you know so that is the way it works pretty cool so this is a regular regular pulse the regular pulse is it drops to drop to ground the see this is the ground it drops drops to ground the uh signal that is sent by the sensor signal wire now the other problem that we people had is okay so we have a problem with the Futaba. Futabas are finicky with the, and the reason for that is because Futaba uses a different kind of pulse. Okay, so that pulse is actually the opposite of that. And um, to do that in this particular one, this particular, let me show you what I'm doing. Okay, in this particular um, sensor. Um, I'm going to add another channel on the oscilloscope so you can see what the this additional output here is going to be the Futaba output, the Futaba pulse. That it is not available on all the, the sensors, you know. This particular one has the electronics for both. So so um, when we ship them you're gonna have a Futaba version that has electronics for that pin to work and the regular pulse for the other one. So let me turn on the um, Futaba pulse, okay? So Futaba pulse, when it's resting, okay, it's actually on zero. Notice that the regular pulse is actually, it's not on zero, zero is here, okay? The actual, the, the regular pulse actually is high all the time. Whereas the Futaba is the reverse, it's low all the time. So the Futaba will have exactly the same thing like the one on top, but it's gonna be reversed. And that's why the top one, the regular RPM pulses confuse the Futaba sensor, the Futaba FEL units. So if you, if you go, notice how, in this case, right here, the pulse is actually going up to the maximum. And if you measure the maximum of that, so let's measure that, uh, it has in the in this one has two volts per division, so it's going to be two one three three point three. So the reason for that is uh, three volts is because the Futaba sensors uh, output three volts. Notice that we are putting on like on this one is five volts per division, so this one is eight point uh, four volts, the maximum that a that a um, uh, two cell lipo can send. Whereas if you send this pulse into the Futaba one, then it will burn the Futaba uh, sensor. The Futaba flower lets you need RPM um, port. So in order to prevent that, you have a, a normalized three, three volt normalized 
pulse that has the reverse behavior than the other one. But as uh, as you can see here, they are you know they work exactly the same, but opposite uh, polarity, and also they are limited. Another thing that you can see is that there is no no extraneous spurious signals the filter because it it includes the same filters that we included on our first um, RPM sensor. It has uh, the filters, the filtered, um, I'm sorry, the, the, the buffer power supply, the uh, uh, ESC uh, discharge uh, filters, and all of that stuff is included on the electronics of the, of, the, of the sensor. So that's the way this works. As you can see, this one is sending actually both types, the regular PW, uh, uh, sorry, RPM pulse and the Futaba RPM pulse on this particular version. You know? By the way, the, 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 the shipping ones are black, they're not red. This is red only because of the, that's the, the, the we have an in-house PCB manufacturing line and uh, <laughs> the one that was mounted was the red, uh, the, the, the solder mask. And I really, ah, this is a prototype, so we're gonna make it whatever, we're not gonna change the color. So, uh, so this one here, as you can see, the plate, let me see if I can, the plate is mounted with this plate, the sensor, mounted with this plate for the 105 and YS120, and then you have a smaller plate, like this, that is for the 50s, you know, 50 size engines. So, um, there is a, a 90 degree block inside, inside, that's what this screw is for. And there's two screws that hold the board against that that uh, that block. So um, the unit is um, is uh, adjusted based on the way you, you you assemble it. So in order to show you how it's done, let me put here on the video screen. Let me put some some um, illustrations of how this works. The, as you can see on this first uh, uh, assembly video, this is the way you assemble your uh, 105 or YS120 or YS91 um, or any 91 uh, uh, size uh, sensor. Uh, notice that the 90 degree block is in the bottom side of the plate, of the mounting plate, not not the circuit board, but the mounting plate. So, this is important because that is going to determine how deep your sensor is going to go. So in this case, like I said, uh, house in the bottom goes in the bottom because it is a way you can extend the reach of the sensor closer to the to the back plate. Um, and now, in this next one, I'm going to show you the 50 size. 50 size uh, plate the 50 size uses the block on the top because we want to separate pull out the circuit board away from the plate a little bit because the 50 size um, plates are shallower than the, than the 90 size uh, 90 105 size uh, uh, back plates so the depth of that of the back plate needs to be shallow so that that is why the mounting side of the of the block is on the top side, okay? And that's how that uh, that uh, works. Okay, going back to to our uh, let me turn this off. Okay, so I'm going to show you now what is the I need a I need to get a okay. Here's a I'm going to show you something that is is pretty cool. Um, let me turn off the the, um, the unit for a second, okay? And let me show you something. Let me get this, this thing out. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not only the 2.5. Yeah, I think this is the 2.5. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get the unit out so the guy, the guy can see it and also I'm gonna show you some cool thing. Oh, here. Oh, notice also that it's on the side. The reason why it's on the side, I mean the um, the uh, plate is mounted sideways, 
is because uh, this uses a massive magnet that won't fit on the regular hole that the back plates have. So it's, it has to be mounted and it actually works better because then the, the exit of the, of, the, of the servo wires actually matches what you need. So here's the sensor, here's the block. As you can see, the block is here. Sorry, here's the sensor, the block. Oh, the block is here. And, um, okay, there you go. So the block, and like I said, this is the bottom side so that the distance between the sensor and the plate is deeper for the deeper reach of the of the uh, 90 sized um, back plates okay so that's why we have that there let me get some some better light here okay so as you can see that is the there now if we go on the top the top side right so this block so you have the, the screw the screw goes on from the other side and raises that and then you use this other back plate right this back plate that is smaller, the distance between the holes, as, as you can see here, is shorter, okay? And it's smaller because it fits the 50 size. All right, so what I wanted to show you on this, oh, by the way, these are the electronics on that. And the unit has circuits here and also programming on the sensor. So let me show you something that is interesting, okay? As I was showing you before, we have a... Um, this side, you know, the counterweight is passing on this area here, this that I marked. That means that because this this sensor is actually um, self-calibrating, check out what you can do. Okay, so um, let me turn on the sensor. Okay, so what I do is I turn on the sensor. Okay can see the, the, the sensor, okay? And then I go and I do that, and look at that. It is sensing the counterweight. That's why the pulses are bigger and longer, you know? As you can see, the pulses are longer because it's a counterweight that is sensing. So that that means, and I actually tried this in one of my uh, helis, you can actually use this in applications where you don't have reach to that or airplane applications or anywhere you have any uh, passing uh, metal, ferromagnetic metal through a another wall, this thing will sense it, calibrate itself and find the new, the new settings so you can actually sense the whole thing. So this is super cool additional features that this uh, sensor has. See, see I, 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 I move it out, if I bring it back, you have the sensor for it, okay? So that's, uh, that's another way to, to do the sensing. And um, there can be other applications like gassers and things like that, where you can bring it close to the crankcase and have the crankcase itself uh, uh, sideways like that, like I'm doing here. Uh, make it uh, uh, allow you to do the sensing of the RPMs using that, that feature. Okay, well, that's uh, it. So, the unit is uh, being manufactured in, um, right now and um, it's up uh, for sale in the s.rc.com uh, store. And, um, hope you guys like it. Thank you very much.